What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel, and welcome to another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC 2020 and 2021 video. Happy New Year's everyone. Tomorrow, at least for me, it's still uh, 2020. It'll be 2021 for me in a couple of hours here, but I figured a fun video that would be a great way to wrap up such a, a great year for me as far as YouTube goes uh, is to look back at all the teams I made in 2020. Or, yeah, I guess just the teams I made in 2020, they're all pretty interesting. If you know me, I'm someone who likes to team build in a bunch of really weird and creative ways, but not too far off the beaten path. Essentially, I like to build uh, functional, cool meme teams, if that makes sense. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into it. Thank you so much for all the support this year. Uh, I hit 10,000 subscribers this year and I nearly hit 20,000. So th this has been a phenomenal year for me as far as YouTube goes. I can only thank you guys. It's been a great year. Thank you so much. If you guys enjoyed this video at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like on it, subscribe to the channel and turn notifications because I'm bringing you guys daily Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC content. So let's start off with the bottom now. This isn't every team I've made this year um, because it'd be impossible to show every team I made this year. Is my cursor showing up? Okay, there, there we go. Uh, it'd be impossible to show every team I made this year uh, because I actually have some on like different PCs, but this is everyone on my main PC that I record videos on. So this is a Rapierior Patreon team. This was series one, I believe. Um, I This team never actually saw usage, I think, but this is prior to Venusaur coming out. As you can see, like the format has changed drastically since series one just by releasing new Pokemon, but this is before Venusaur came out. Uh, so people were still using Vileplume and Torkoal if you wanted to get the same effect. I had Eruption Protect, Earth Power, Solar Beam. Uh, we had Weakness Policy, Solid Rock, Rhyperior, a very bulky set. I only had 56 attack. I forget what exactly this is meant to KO at plus two, but this is before like GMAX Lapras was legal and everything. So Rhyperior was still like king, you know? Uh, we have a full defensive Dust Clops with Haze, Pain Split, Trick Room, Nightshade. Um, I believe this is... Why does it have Haze? That was supposed to be Bulldoze. Yeah, so that was actually supposed to be Bulldoze on the, on the Dust Clops. Uh, we have a Guab Berry Aranguru with Inner Focus, just a way to get off Trick Room more reliably. Um, we had Wide Lens Vile Plume, Energy Ball, after you Sleep Powder Protect, after you into Torkoal or Viperior was disgusting. Uh, and we had Assault Vest Hitmon Top with actually Vacuum Wave to set off the Viperior uh, weakness policy if need be. So it was just a fun little team uh, that I had, I, I used like two or three times and then didn't really use after that. This team never saw the light of day. I used it for two games by myself and never used it again. We're just going to go over it really quick. It was a fun acupressure team with like weakness policy, Araquanid and stuff. Beyond that, it was just very, very bad. <laughs> so we're going to skip past that. This is actually the first version of my first ever Thievil team. I remember when I came up with the idea, Collinsville Regionals was just around the corner and I was in a bowling class because I needed a couple of extra credits in my uh, at college. So I was in a bowling class and it hit me. I was like, Wait, Thievil has <laughs> Unburden. Why don't I use that with like Indeedee or uh, something that can abuse it? So basically, Choice Scarf, Indeedee, Modest Nature, Max Speed, Max Special Attack, 4 HP, Psychic, Mystical Fire, Hyper Voice, Magic Room in case I wanted to undo my Choice Scarf or some other reason. It was a weird option. I should have honestly just ran. Um, and this is before Expanding Forces is a thing, but I should have honestly just ran like Shadow Ball or some kind of coverage move. Anything other than Magic Room would have been fun, but I remember Magic Room came in handy once when I let off Ndidi Duraludon at Collinsville Regionals, uh, because what I did is I would go for Magic Room with Choice Scarf Ndidi, removing Babiri Berry from uh, Hatterene, which would allow Max Duraludon to one-shot it with Max Steel Spike. So that was like the tech that I had on the team, but uh, it was just very bulky Thievil. If you know me, I've used Thievil very successfully over the last year. Uh, Snarl, Foul Play, Parting Shot, Fake Tears, Psychic Seed, Unburden. Um, he was able to pretty much eat everything. It was great versus Charizard Sun, in fact. This team just hard beat Charizard Sun because Thievo was able to wall it out amazingly. It was like so good versus that team. We had Expert Belt, Gyarados, Waterfall Bounce, Power Whip Protect. I should have honestly just ran Life Orb, but I think the Life Orb was better on Duraldon anyways. Uh, I could have gone Assault Vest though. Assault Vest Duraldon. I think I might have actually switched over to that, but I can't remember. Uh, we have a Guab Berry, Arcanine, the standard set people were running, a very defensive one uh, that allowed you to beat Excadrill pretty reliably. Uh, once again, Life Orb, max, not max speed, but uh, enough speed for Dragapult, max HP almost, max special attack. Uh, Duraldon, which is honestly a very slept on Pokemon right now. I think Duraldon could still be good in the format. And we had max HP, four special attack, max speed, uh, Whimsicott with Tailwind, Moonblast, Energy Ball, and Taunt. Uh, just... I should have ran fake tears on that thing, but I think the fake tears in Thievil was enough. 
Uh, then again, the fake tears overall would have been really good for helping out Duraludon on leads. So yeah, it was a really fun team. Uh, I ended up changing it a bit. As you can see, we have version two here, uh, which I believe I just, what did I do? Oh, I made a much different Duraludon spread. It was much bulkier. I forget exactly what this lived, but I just updated Duraludon to be like a super complex spread that allowed me to do something that I can't remember. So yeah, that was the next version of the team. Uh, this was not actually a team. This was just me showcasing all the new Pokemon coming in series three, I believe. So yeah, this is another Rhyperior team. It wasn't great, but it was all right. I was still trying to use a Raquinid under Trick Room, which I think it was okay. This was the final version of the Collinsville team that I brought. So we have essentially the same thing. Uh, I'm not sure what changed there. I think I added Howl. That was the thing. Was was Howl the thing? Did I have Howl on this version? I did. What what happened? The Howl attack was actually really cool. So Howl um, next to Gyarados, what you could do is you could go for max Airstream. And with Mox, you'd get plus one speed, plus one attack from a KO. And the Howl would actually be like a permanent helping hand in all your physical moves, which made it so at the end of the turn, you could end up with plus two attack, plus one speed, which was disgusting for steamrolling teams. Um, oh, that's what happened. I ended up switching to Safeguard Arcanine, I believe, after a bad experience at a local. Was that what I changed? No, what, what was it? What happened that justified me changing this to version three? Um... I'm not sure. Something happened. I just can't remember off the top of my head. But yeah, um, that, that was pretty much it. Um, this team was really cool. But this is another team I actually built with uh, my buddy Ioku, I believe. Was this the Ioku team? Shout out Ioku. Great guy. Great content creator too. Go ahead and check him out. Uh, but this was a fun team. Basically, we used Air Balloon, G-Max, Toxtricity with Punk Rock, Overdrive, Sludge Bomb, Boom Burst, and Protect. Uh, with Corviknight is just like a nice defensive Pokemon to help us beat. Um, I forget what it was. I think I can't re even remember what it was Corviknight was meant to be, but Corviknight was good in the format. Uh, we had Whimsicott with Tailwind, Fake Tears, Moonblast, Taunt. These two were disgusting next to each other. Uh, but GMAX Toxtricity, its GMAX move would paralyze and or, or not and or, but paralyze or poison everything on the other side of the field if it was capable of receiving those status conditions. And then we ran Life Orb Hex Dragapult with Draco Meteor, Will O Wisp, and Protect. It was disgusting because Dragapult would just pick up so many KOs with Hex because it ends up hitting, what is this, 130 base power when something's status. It was such a gross combination. It was a really fun team. We had Safety Goggles and Cinderor because this was, I believe, uh, the first Series 3 team I built. Uh, and we had Expert Belt Gyarados. I remember I actually used this team in a uh, mid season showdown that happened right after Collinsville. So this. These two teams, these two teams, uh, the Collinsville gang and the Toxahex team, they were like one day after another, I just used the team. And of course, I just slapped on a Gyarados on that team because Gyarados was goaded at the time. It was really good. And it was just nice for getting another uh, ground switch in. This was a team I don't believe ever saw the light of day, uh, but it was, what was the thing with this team? There was something cool about it. I don't remember, but... Uh, we had Runergus with a Figgy Berry, Max Defense, Max HP, Trick Room, Body Press, Earthquake, Will-O-Wisp. Uh, honestly, Dusclops is just better, but I get Earthquake with this one, I guess. <laughs> uh, Assault Vest, Incineroar. We had Weakness Policy, U, Lapras. Oh yeah, this was around the time Lapras came out. And I was actually running Sheer Cold because I was really tired of losing to like Stall. So what would happen is if I ended up becoming like Lapras versus the world, I would just spam Sheer Cold and hope I would win. <laughs> it was funny though. It was it was a really funny team. I didn't use it in tournament, but it was so funny. Uh, we had Charcoal, Torkoal, and we had uh, Venusaur because Venusaur was just becoming legal, which was a great Pokemon. Next up was another Yoku collaboration. Yoku, come back. We need to make more videos, but... Uh, this was Kingler and Manectric, and I actually brought this to Players' Cup, not Players' Cup, um, I brought it to Champions' Cup, which was the A-Drive and Wolfie tournament, and I did pretty good, I ended up losing at like round 5, and I had to leave after that point because it was X and 2, uh, but it was a really fun team, we used Assault Vest G-Max Kingler with Hypercutter, because Hypercutter made it so we couldn't be intimidated by opposing Incineroar, uh, this guy had disgusting, disgusting speed control because max foam burst uh, decreases their speed by two, which is gross. Um, we also had Life Orb, not Life Orb, Focus Sash, Lightning Rod, Manectric with Volt Switch, Eerie Impulse, Rain Dance, and Howl, Howl boosting Kingler's attack stat, as well as protecting it with um, Lightning Rod, so that was cool. Scope Blends, Togekiss, because this was around the time that picked up heavily. 
Uh, we had Leftovers Ferrothorn, just very defensive, meant to sit on the field. That saved us a lot of games. Uh, Incineroar, Figgy Berry, Intimidate, standard set that I used most of the time in that series. And we had Life Orb Dragapult just for like cleanup crew in case we needed to run Togekiss Dragapult to uh, win a matchup that was really bad for Kingler. This team never saw the light of day. I don't even want to talk about it. It was bad. It was really bad. Uh, but yeah. Uh, what else do I have? This team was actually one that I built when it was a collaboration that fell through with Fufu too. Uh, and that was just because we ran out of time. I'm, we're still working on a video together. We, we have to get that out soon. But this is a while ago, like a year almost. Uh, we had Incineroar, Colossal, Inteleon, Togekiss, Gmax, Corviknight, and Conkeldur. Basically, it was just using Aqua Jet, Colossal, Inteleon to, uh, you know, sweep. That was pretty much it. It was a very basic team, but a very fun team. It was around the time Gmax Colossal first became legal, I believe. Uh, I think so. Maybe it was a little bit after, but whatever. This was just a test I had for um, Gmax Flapple. Never used it on the channel, but essentially Gmax Flapple lowers the evasion of your opponents, which meant you could use Wide Lens Hypnosis to accurately uh, KO things. Um, Screech was also very cool. I don't remember if this was a team I made. It has to be a team I made. I, I sometimes get confused if I make a team or if it was passed to me by a viewer, but this looks like a team I made just because it has my Incinera spread. Uh, but yeah, that was a cool team. This team, I believe, was one of the first Series 5 teams I made, if not passed to me. I don't remember, but no, this was definitely not a team I made. I think, because that helping hand on a Rotom Heat, which doesn't seem like a, a me thing to do. I also probably didn't run this Gudra, so that, this is not a team I made. Diggersby. Uh, this was an interesting one. I just wanted to use Diggersby. It was pretty goaded. It wasn't great, though. I didn't use it on like the channel. Like The team overall wasn't great, but the uh, Diggersby was really cool. This is not a team. This was Fu's version of uh, the GMX Flapple team. We both had a take on it. Um... This was a concept I had for Razorclaw Drapion to be used in a similar way to Togekiss uh, because he had 50% chance to crit on Night Slash, Cross Poison, Iron, not Iron Tail, but uh, with Sniper it would do a lot. Togekiss, Scope Lens, it was like a full crit team. It wasn't great, but it was funny. Um, this is not a real team. Full idiot mode. I remember this team. I would use, um, I would just be using like Ficious Rend. It was meant to be a meme team, but full idiot mode was a fun one. This team, I don't believe ever saw the light of day, but um, weakness policy, standard stuff. The only thing that was weird was Turtonator with a White Herb. Basically, it was just Shell Smash Turtonator with, you know, Thunder Wave support. Very simple team, but a very strange team. Now, this one was fire. Oh my god, this one was fire, and it actually saved me one day because I saw a Quagsire on a Trick Room team, and I knew exactly what it was for because it's the only reason to run Quagsire is for after you under Trick Room, because you underspeed so many things. So I was running uh, Quagsire, Gmax Charizard, Venusaur, Togekiss, Conkeldur, Torkoal, and it was a very standard Sun offense team, you know, Charizard, Venusaur, Togekiss, Conkeldur, Torkoal, but I had Quagsire on there, because what I could do is if my Venusaur was under Sun, I could actually still underspeed things like Rhyperior and beat them by going for after you and then clicking Leaf Storm, which was so fun. It was such a fun little team, and I wish I used it in a video, but I did not. Did I just accidentally delete the team? Okay. <laughs> I accidentally deleted the team for a moment there. Dang, I made so many teams. That's my one thing I will say. I, I am a very creative team builder. I've made so many teams this year. Um, looks like we're getting close to more recent teams. There we go. There's the Quaxer team. Sandforce Gigalith was phenomenal. Uh, basically, the whole deal was Gigalith would set up its own sand instead of having to go for like Sandstream on Switch and you would, oh, and this was the, this is around the time I made the burger meme. So everything on this team is named after a burger thing. Uh, but basically if you had Sand Force up and Weakness Policy active, you could one shot <laughs> Dusclops, which was gross. And that was the whole meme of it. You were able to one shot Dusclops with Sand Force and Weakness Policy Max Rockfall. Um, we also had a Bronzong here with zero speed IVs. And this guy had to have a couple of speed IVs to make sure you get outspeed the Bronzong. Uh, and allow the Bronzling to go for uh, Trick Room and Bulldoze. Fun fact, I actually hopped into uh, Blunder's stream. There was a moment where Blunder was playing VGC and he was having a great time, man. He was having a great time playing VGC. And I drop a sub and I say, hey, can I battle you? I'm a VGC YouTuber. He goes, yeah, sure, sure. And then I win off of a blind hypnosis and I'm like, yeah, good players land those. <laughs> so uh, winning off a blind hypnosis versus Blunder was not my, my highest moment, but I pretended like it was. But yeah, 
Uh, and now he hasn't played since, and sometimes I, I stay awake at night wondering if I ruined it. Anyways, so we have Scopeland, Soakus, uh, Wikiberry, Milotic, and Incineroar. Standard spread that I use. This team was okay, I think. I, I don't remember it, but I think I used it once, and it was pretty cool. Just Hustle Drake as ult, because that was a thing. This was a fun team. Oh, this was a really fun team. It wasn't great, but it was fun. Basically, you would use uh, Gengar and trap things in. And you could actually use Copycat and Max Guard Parish Song if you wanted to protect Gengar while getting off the Parish Song. And that was it. You would just, like, parting shot to get in. Not parting shot. You would um, switch out to get in, like, Gothitelle. You would just rotate the entire team and stall it out. So this was just a Gengar Parish Trap team that I used around the time Gengar was legal. Now, this team was great. This team was great. This was around the time that Pikachu just got access to Lightning Rod. And what I would do is I would lead off Pikachu and Togekiss because Pikachu just got Lightning Rod. So he already had Lightning Rod, but not the G-Max form. The G-Max form didn't have it. So they just released it. Pikachu would pick up so many KOs and just paralyze everything, which is also uh, why I eventually changed this Dragapult to be Hex and a special attacker. But in this version, it was um, Phantom Force. So yeah, Pikachu would just support Togekiss. They were a great partner. They were, they were great partners. Uh, I'd run Wildlands Venusaur with no Sun support. Because <laughs> that was actually a thing. You didn't even need Sun. Venusaur was just kind of fast for what the format was. It was faster than a couple of things, so you were able to run that. Um, Nasty Plot Rotom and Life Orb Dragapult. This was a cool team. I, I wish I could still use this team and succeed. This is not my team. Uh, this is not my team. This is not my team. This is not my team. These are like teams that I built with people. Oh, wait, no. This was a team that I used for a time, and then I dropped it. It wasn't great. Um, I'm going to show you all these teams I passed up, and then eventually I settled on this one. This is the one I brought to Players' Cup 1 and failed to qualify with, and mostly it was my fault. This team relied a lot a lot more on RNG than I anticipated. Basically, it was G-Max Flapple. Uh, I was Jolly, Life Orb, Hustle, standard set, and Max um, Tartness would lower their evasion, making it easier to land Hypnosis and Icy Wind as well as Rock Slide and other kind of inaccurate moves. It was just a fun team. It was reliable. I, I did really well with it um, in practice, but when I needed to do well with it, I, I just couldn't cut it. So yeah, uh, unfortunately, Players' Cup 1, I did not qualify. Um, I ended up qualifying for Players' Cup 2, and we'll get to that team in a moment, because I think that's probably the best team I've made this season, because it's a culmination of a couple of <laughs> Pokemon story arcs that were, that were heading towards it. Um, I gotta stop scrolling down. I, I mean, I have to stop like scrolling up and losing track of where I was. Where are we? So that was Players Cup 1. Where are you? There it is. Uh, this one was actually a team I should have used for a video, but I never did. It was a Galarian Stunfist team. And what you would do is you would use Assault Vest and you had Steel Beam. It was a special attacking Stunfisk. Uh, but it was actually able to pick up KOs with Max Steel Beam just because Steel Beam did so much damage. And it was just a fun team. There was really nothing else about it that was like super unique. Just Galarian Stumpfisk. Lanky Kong. All right. Uh, this was Gengar Parish, but I sub I switched it for Meowth. And I actually made a video with it where I would use Meowth and <laughs> Hypnosis. Now copycat Hypnosis to put things to sleep. It was a very funny meme team, but it wasn't meant to be taken seriously. That's not a team. This was when Cinderace first got Libero. And all I did was swap it out for the Pikachu and the team was busted. <laughs> As you can see, it's a copy of Pika Chonker and Friends. Uh, I did the same thing with the uh, G-Max Italian, and it wasn't great, so pass over that. Uh, Blunder Policy Shenotic was a concept I had for a moment, and then I realized that the least accurate move Shenotic has is Stun Spore or Leech Seed. So yeah, Blunder Policy Shenotic wasn't good, never saw the light of day. Um... Ooh, ooh, monkey team. This is when Rillaboom was a thing. Uh, or it still is. This is when Rillaboom first came out. I was using Surf Dragapult, Heat Wave, Solar Beam, Ancient Power, Colossal. I should have ran Meteor Beam at this time because this is when Meteor Beam became a thing. Uh, but it was just like a standard-ish Sun, not Sun Offense, but Colossal Dragapult setup at the time. But uh, I put Rillaboom on it, which was innovative, but now it's not. That's not a real team. Um... This team was so good. Oh my god. This is one of my favorite teams I've ever built. Probably not like the best team I've ever built, but definitely one of my favorites just because of how it functioned. Basically, uh, what I did is I ran Toxapex on the team, and Toxapex had Grassy Seed. And you might be thinking, Marcus, why are you running Toxapex in doubles? Toxapex would, go to, would get a Grassy Seed boost from Rillaboom, and I was able to set up Toxic Spikes, 
which if, if things switched out, they would get poisoned. And what I would do is actually just, because things were poisoned, I was able to stall things out and play offensively and stuff. Um, but because things were poisoned, I could also spam Venom Drench, which by the way, hits both of them. If I remember correctly, I think it hits both of them and it would lower every stat they had by one stage, every relevant stat, attack, special attack speed, um, not defenses, but I was able to wall things out with Toxapex as a support mon, which was really cool for the time. And I had a, a lot of fun with it. The video is still up if you want to check it out, but yeah, Malga Berry, Snarl, Safeguard, um, Arcanine, we had Togekiss, Excadrill, and Dragapult, standard team beyond that. But that was that was a really fun team. This was my first Urshifu team. I remember I was using, this is actually a really fun team. I, I didn't do great with it, but I, I was able to use it effectively. This is like one of the first Isle of Armor teams I dropped, I believe. Uh, but Urshifu had Life Orb, Politoed helped it out, standard setup. Koba Berry Amoongus was innovative for a moment, and then everyone was running it, so it didn't matter. Um... This team was never finished. So I kind of started it and then I remember this is when I was building for Players Cup and I wanted to use Offensive and DD. And then I was like, wait a second, why don't I just do what I did before, but better? So this is the first version of what I would eventually make into my Players Cup team. Even though this is like way before Players Cup 2 was announced, I just figured they would do another one. So I started building and I use this team on the channel, but it was Indeedy Thievil, same setup. Exactly, except I swapped out expanding, or I swapped out uh, Magic Room for Psychic like an idiot. <laughs> I ended up eventually going with Dazzling Gleam because why would I run two moves that are just barely different in power, especially when Psychic Terrain is gone. Anyways, yeah, it was it was dumb. Uh, but I had Thievil with Unburden, Fake Tears, Foul Play, Beat Up, and Snarl. Beat Up would activate Terrakion's Justified. Uh, Kobe Berry, Amoongus, Standard Incineroar, Citrus Berry, Rotom Wash. It was very, it was very cool. This team never saw the light of day. It was bad. <laughs> um, this team was not a real team. It was just talking about it. This was bad. This is bad. Dragalge was actually really cool. Dragalge was a very cool Pokemon. Basically, it was the same sort of setup as the uh, Bronzong plus Rhyperior team. But Primarina was really good at the time. This was a Series 6 team, if I remember. So Series 6 was when we had a lot of Pokemon banned. No, it wasn't because there's a Dragapult in this team. But I was trying to use Dragalge. And it was really cool because you could just activate weakness policy with, you know, bulldoze. And it was just able to pick up a lot of chaos. I did really well with it when I used it. Um, this was dumb. Not a real team. This was just redirection scope lens. I don't even know if I built this team because I'm not someone who usually uses Gastrodon. That was probably just a team submitted to me. That wasn't a team I built. This is not a team I built. Oh, no, this was. <laughs> this was where I would give... Um, I would Aqua Jet my own Weakness Policy Rune Aragus, and I would trade Wandering Spirit for Huge Power, and then I would Dynamax, and I was able to pick up massive KOs with Max Poltergeist. This was a really fun team. Basically, it was just Rune Aragus, you know, memes. Um, this, these were from coaching sessions, which I did over the summer. Zoroark, now this was a fun team. This is the best Rune Aragus team I've built so far. Uh, and basically what it was is, if I remember correctly, you could lead off Runaragus and Tyranitar, or you could lead off Runaragus and Zorark. And uh, Zorark was actually really cool because you could go for a nasty plot and sweep with like, you know, Night Days, Sludge Bomb, whatever. Uh, but Burning Jealousy was the heat because what would happen is opponents would try to go for, you would disguise yourself as um, Toekiss, right? And opponents would either go for Max Airstream or Max Steel Spike into you. And because you had Focus Sash, you could go for Burning Jealousy and actually burn things like Max Steel Spiking, Libero, Cinderace. And I would do that so much. They would just go for the Max Steel Spike and I'd be able to burn them, which was really cool. Uh, we had Weakness Policy, Lash Out, Tyranitar, which was really cool at the time. Kobe Berry, Amoongus, Stater, and Cinder. It was a fun team. And yeah, uh, we also just had Rune Aragus to activate the Weakness Policy on Tyranitar. This team was bad. This team was bad. This team was bad. This team was bad. <laughs> I had a lot of bad teams at this time. This team was bad. Uh, this team was cool. So what I did is I was using uh, Offensive Porygon 2 with Download and Eject Button, Galarian and Weezing. And what I would do is I would actually lead off Porygon 2, switch in the Weezing, and I would get one Download boost, usually in Special Attack, um, depending on the matchup. I, I wanted Special Attack. And then they would hit the Weezing, switch it out, and I would get another download boost and I could do it again. I could just keep cycling and wheezing, getting special attack boost. And since Porygon 2 was so 
strong in the special offensive stat uh, and just bulk wise, I was able to Dynamax this guy and get massive damage on things. And I could actually click Aromatic Mist onto my Porygon to make it even harder to knock out and click Will-O-Wisp on physical attackers. So on both sides of the defensive spectrum, I was able to like just KO things. The rest of the team was very standard for the time, but that was a fun team. So I called it Bandwidth. <laughs> This is not a team that I made. Um, this is some WBE stuff. This team I did not like because it was just hyper offensive, dumb, dumb doo doo stuff from Series 6. Uh, this was a fun team though. This was expanding harder. <laughs> so I would use expanding force, twisted spoon, analytic behem, and just pick up so many KOs just by virtue of behem having every single multiplier. <laughs> <laughs> on expanding force and the twisted spoon would boost it even more so that was a that was a fun little team i built um so i, I remember having a lot of success with that team and it was a fun time this team was not one i built i believe this is one i built but i didn't like or maybe this is like a coaching team i don't know this looks like a team i made in the coaching session but not not technically my team um a couple of things that were gross this team was good for a moment and then it became a meme it was good at the beginning when no one knew what they were doing in Series 6, but it ended up being great for like two days, and then it was garbage. So we ended up calling it like Cleveland or something. <laughs> we just called it like the Cleveland team. I don't remember where that joke came from. Series 6, because everything was getting banned, I made a fun little meme team where I was using the not fully evolved form of banned Pokemon. Uh, this team was okay. Didn't like it, though. I ended up having a lot of success with a different version of that team. Let me scroll up to that. Um, where are you? I don't know where it is. I had a Blastoise version of that team, and that was what was like what I found very success a lot of success with. Um, but I guess we have to skip ahead to Players Cup Two. This is like the last team I actually used seriously, and this is probably the best team I used in 2020, at least the 2020 season. Basically, Choice Scarf and Didi, same sort of setup as the, you know, the Consville team. Uh, however, with Thievul being slightly bulkier and Didi being slightly bulkier, I gave them just enough for what they needed to do. Uh, and Didi is now finally running Dazzling Gleam instead of a garbage move. Uh, same moves on Thievul, except Beat Up is meant to activate Life Orb Cobalion's Justified. It was meant to sweep things, so it was like a 50-50 lead. Especially when you're qualifying for Player's Cup 2, this was huge, just having a 50-50 lead. Uh, so you could either activate Justified on Cobalion, set up for Ndidi, or even activate a Weakness Policy on Dragapult, which is huge. I had a very bulky Dragapult, uh, which was able to sweep a lot of games. I had Scope Lens Tokus for a secondary option. I could go Dragapult Tokus for that thing. And at the time, people were really annoyed with Venusaur and G-Max Venusaur, so I had a definitive answer to that. I was running Safety Goggles Gyarados uh, with Bounce, Waterfall, Power Whip, and Taunt. If I faced a Venusaur team, I would just max this thing immediately. There was no 50-50 there, no there. I didn't have to worry about if they were going to Sleep Powder. I didn't have to worry about if they were going to Gigantamax. I would just always max Airstream into them, and it was a monster for them to face. So once again, Thievul and Didi pulling in the work. I think that Thievul is a great Pokemon that needs to be explored more. Uh, and as you can see, I had a lot of success with it. This team I did qualify for Players Cup 2 with, and I ended up going a decent distance within Players Cup 2, at least for the first Players Cup I qualified for. So yeah, that was cool. We do have some 2021 teams, but these are technically 2021. Even though I built them in 2020, uh, I don't want to go over them since this is already a pretty long video. So yeah, thank you for going down memory, ro yeah, memory road with me in this video. Uh, I really appreciate all the support this year. You guys have been amazing. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.